We live on a planet full of natural radiation. It's present in soil, rocks, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and even in our own bodies. This natural radiation makes up the bulk of the total radiation we are exposed to every day. We're also exposed to artificial radiation, including medical tests like x-rays and small amounts of radioactive material called radionuclides, released from licensed nuclear facilities. I'm Julie, and I work for the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. We can't see, hear, smell, touch, or taste radiation. Until 1895, we didn't even know it existed. But we've come a long way in our understanding about what ionizing radiation is and how it affects our bodies and our environment. For example, we can measure the amount of radiation in the environment with radiation detection devices, like Geiger counters. They count the energy deposited in the detector by the radiation. Listen to the sound of natural uranium in this rock sample. That count can then be used to calculate a dose. A dose is the quantity we use when we talk about the potential health effects of radiation. A dose takes into account the type of radiation you've been exposed to and the organs in your body which have been exposed. It's expressed using the unit sievert, or more commonly, millisievert, which is a thousand times smaller. On average, Canadians receive a dose of 1.8 millisieverts every year from natural background radiation, coming from radioactive materials found in soil, rocks, some foods, and cosmic radiation. This number can range from 1 to 4 millisieverts, depending on where you live in Canada. For example, cosmic radiation is more intense for people living at higher altitudes or further from the equator. Likewise, Terrestrial radiation is higher for people living in areas where rocks and soil contain more natural radioactive elements. So what are the health effects caused by radiation? Certain types of radiation have enough energy to penetrate our bodies. When it passes through tissues in the body, electrically charged atoms, called ions, can change or destroy cells. The body is a pretty amazing organism, and most of the time, these cells repair themselves. This can happen millions of times every day. If, however, the DNA or other critical parts of the cell receive a large dose of radiation all at once, the cell may die or be damaged beyond repair. If this happens to a large number of cells, tissue effects can occur. Examples of these effects include cataracts, which can happen at around 500 millisieverts, and acute radiation syndrome symptoms like nausea and skin burns that can be seen at doses well over 1,000 millisieverts. Extremely high levels of radiation in the range of 4,000 to 5,000 millisieverts can be fatal. This level of exposure is very rare. If the cell incorrectly repairs itself, but continues to live, then stochastic effects could occur. This type of damage could develop into a cancer over time. The higher the radiation dose, the more likely a cancer will occur. In population studies, we generally don't observe health effects appearing at doses lower than about 100 millisieverts. Most importantly, our understanding of how cells can be damaged by radiation allows us to use that same knowledge to target and kill cancer cells. We know what happens once radiation enters the body, but how does it get inside you in the first place? When we talk about radiation exposure, we are talking about pathways. There are various pathways radiation can take to get inside the body, including the air we breathe and the food we eat, all of which contribute to our radiation dose. Did you know a Brazil nut naturally contains trace amounts of the radionuclides potassium-40 and radium-226? Delicious. Our bodies can't distinguish between natural and artificial radionuclides. One source of artificial radiation is the small controlled quantity of radionuclides permitted to be released from licensed nuclear facilities into the environment. These radionuclides could be carried in the air and deposited on a farmer's field. Animals eat grass and grain from that field and then provide food that people eat and drink. Understanding that chain of events, that one pathway, makes it possible to begin estimating a dose to the person who consumes that food. Overall, the amount of radionuclides in food is extremely small and does not affect your health. For major facilities, a similar assessment is done to look at the impact of radiation on the environment itself, including wildlife and vegetation. Since radiation has the potential to cause harm, it must be strictly regulated. That's where the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission comes in. Our mandate is to regulate the use of nuclear energy and materials to protect health, safety, security, and the environment. The radiation protection regulations define the dose limits used to protect the health of the public and nuclear energy workers. Members of the public are limited to one millisievert of exposure per year from licensed activities. This is in addition to all other sources of radiation, like natural or medically related radiation. 
workers are limited to 50 millisieverts in one year and 100 millisieverts over five years. Nuclear energy workers can wear small devices called dosimeters that measure and track the radiation doses. This is one way to make sure they don't exceed the limits. These dosimeters can be worn on different parts of the body, depending on the kind of work they do. It's important to note that dose limits are regulatory limits and not health limits. As a result of our strict regulations and oversight, we are happy to report that these dose limits are rarely reached. I've given you a lot of information. Let's put some of the numbers in perspective. Members of the public living near a major facility typically receive 0.001 millisieverts a year from licensed nuclear activities, which is less than the 0.1 millisieverts of a typical chest x-ray. The public dose limit is one millisievert per year. This is on top of the dose received through natural background radiation, which in Canada is nearly twice that high, at an annual average of 1.8 millisieverts. Workers are limited to 50 millisieverts in one year and 100 millisieverts in five years. In fact, they typically get far smaller doses. Health effects like cataracts can happen at 500 millisieverts, and acute radiation syndrome symptoms can be seen at doses well over 1,000 millisieverts. I know radiation doses can sound scary, but you can rest assured the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission is there, overseeing the nuclear sector to protect your health and safety as well as that of the environment. The Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, the answers you need from a source you can trust. Visit our website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel.